Hi everyone, welcome to Southeast Mark II Golfs. Today we are putting on the reconditioned head, which I've not even opened yet, onto our existing block. Stick with us. To prepare the block ready for the head to go on, I scrape off any old sealant and imperfections using a Stanley knife blade. It's imperative that the mating surface is completely flat and smooth. Once the surface is smooth and the water channels have been cleared as well, we break out the engine enamel paint. We then choose to paint the engine black, which it would have been from factory. A bit better than rusty brown. I'm sure the internet will have something to say about the way I do this. I am not an artist, but this is not a show car, so it's just to look a bit better than it was, is our opinion really. I find it's doing jobs like these that make quite a big visual difference to the engine. Even though it's not actually going to make any performance or even reliability gains, it does make it look a lot nicer. So whilst doing this chain, we're going to replace everything that we can with new parts. So you've got your chain guide on the bottom here, which goes like that. And then you're going to have the oil. Uh, it's that way, isn't it? Is it that way? Yeah, it's that way. Yeah. And that'll go on like that. And then the chain will run around it. So we'll run through putting the bottom part of the chain on first, because you can do that separate. When fitting the chain, it is easiest to loop the chain around the crank sprocket first. You want to ensure that the oil pump has the flat part at the top so that the little arrow lines up with the line on the oil pump. It may take a few goes of trial and error to ensure that the arrow lines up with the line on the oil pump. The top part of the chain just feeds through the guide, but there is still a little bit of adjustment to be done. It does take a few attempts. Now we've got the chain on, you just want to make sure that all the slack is on the bottom. You've not got any slack on the top. And that arrow in there lines up nicely with the line which is inside. So a little handy tip here to keep this closed because it's always going to have pressure on it to open it up. Just wrap a cable tie around it and then we we'll refit it under there. That's the tension. So now we cut the cable tie and it will put tension on. He says. Oh no. We are with the torque wrench set to eight newton meters. And it's just a star drive. It goes in here. There you go. Click. One there. And one there. I mean that's barely hand tight really. So and so these five millimeter Allen pins are torqued to 10 newton meters. <laughs> you may remember the state of the head when we removed it. Even the chain can't escape the baked on oil. All this baked on oil risks seizing the chain in time. So here we are in a little industrial park just outside of Ongo in Essex. Here to pick up the reconditioned head. I love these sort of places. Real nuggets of uh, businesses that you might find. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. So here we go, just got the head back from Thurston Engineering. You can see it's all cellophane wrapped up, but just from looking in here, it looks a lot clearer than what it did when I gave it to them. So all the rockers are separate, so I need to put them in uh, when I get the car back, when I get the engine back to the car or to the block, which is still on the engine stand. And I've got the receipt, uh, the bit of works here, and you can see they've done a fair bit of work to it. Some pressure test there, uh, refaced the head, down by four thou, um, so I supplied new valve stem oil seals and they have stripped, decoked, clean head, uh, polished and reseat valves, cleaned rockers, lifters and reassemble and vacuum tested. Yeah, can't wait to put it back on and actually get it running again. Hopefully it'll give a fair amount more poke and just, yeah, have it running a lot better. And now to drive like Miss Daisy all the way home so it doesn't slip around too much. Don't fancy damaging that. So as it turns out, the boot of an estate car is a lovely sort of workbench where you can put all your gaskets and seals and stuff. 
before rebuilding the engine. So we've got everything all in their boxes. We've gone for Victor Rhines. I've heard they're good gaskets and seals, so we'll put these together and we'll talk through it. So now we're going to remove the cam solenoid oil seals. We've already managed to remove one and they should just tap out. Okay. I'm going to replace with these and they are both the same part number. We remove the thermostat gasket and replace it with a new one. As you can see this gasket has a little tab so it can't be fitted the wrong way. We're now ready to put the head on. Here we go, look at this. This is a lovely new, well I say new, a lovely reconditioned head. It's had a lot of work done to it. That is a thing of beauty. Just get a bit of new engine oil and just wipe in the bores. That just helps make sure that the pistons are free to go up and down for the first turn of the key. Here we have our new head gasket. It can only really go one way. I think if you manage to get it another way, well, good luck to you. I don't know how you do it because it goes on like that and then the top chain will pass through that bit. So if it's the wrong way around, uh, well, yeah, I don't know how, it, how you'd manage it because it would just be all out of shape. So that is unlike that. You don't need any gasket sealant or anything. It should seal itself. Here we have a brand new set of head bolts. These do need to be replaced. You can't just reuse the same ones because they are stretch bolts. That won't do them any good and it will last about five minutes. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense now. If you know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> that just sort of clicked on then, did it? Kind of clicked on. Yeah, I was looking at the underneath. It's got them little... Them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Clips into the... Yeah. It's quite a satisfying click. That is, a, that is nearly as satisfying as undoing those bolts we did in the earlier <laughs> episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> First of all, tightening to 30 newton meters. And we'll work in a circle, we've got a guide, and we'll go around in a spiral like that. So everyone at 30 newton meters to start with. I've tightened, set the torque wrench. That's all the head bolts torqued to 30 newton meters. We now have to torque them to 50 newton meters. Same order again. There it is. <laughs> so I've now got to torque these 90 degrees each bolt. So I've marked a little pink bit there and on the actual body there. So when I've turned that 90 degrees, they should line up. So. Now we have to do another 90 degrees. I think I'll be sweating by the end of this. Let's go. So I've already marked it up. So I've just got to bring that little pink mark, which I've got on there, to that bit. It's half past. Well, that middle one's actually sort of slightly slackened off again, which I think is the whole purpose of doing this. On to the next one. Jesus, I'm gonna have, like, <laughs> Massive guns by the time I do the next one. <laughs> I was filming that. Really? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so on go the camshafts.
these cam bearings have to go on exactly as they came off otherwise you'll end up with a seized cam which is not fun and the cam caps they have to go in exactly the same order which they came off and in the same position as well so making sure that these little tags are pointing towards the outside of the head we refit the cam solenoid housing next we'll tighten down the camshaft bearings so these are going to be torqued down to 20 newton meters but i'm only going to do a little bit at a time until it starts just getting a little bit tighter but before it actually clicks and then move on to the next one and i'll just keep doing that we've got these copper links here and you want these three links going around this intermediate sprocket here and that one on this link on this uh, sprocket and the other one and that one so the best way to do it is just to drape it through the open head gasket there otherwise you're just going to be fighting with it and you can end up risk damaging the, the head gasket itself make sure you've got the guide on the top there as well like so first of all you put this in to this hole there, into this bit. Get it so it's almost finger tight, and then you can put the guide and slot it over there, like that, just so it's not going to go anywhere. And that gives you a lot more room to then set the guide in there. So now we put the other chain guide on. Now we've got to make sure that the cams are at TDC. We've got this cam alignment tool here and there are two notches on either cam. One there, one there. And they've got to be aligned. So we've got one aligned already. This just needs just lightly turning around and then in we go and you also want to make sure that the inlet and the exhaust cams are almost pointing each other so you've got that little scribed arrow there that points to the tooth there and then when you align that the dowels it can only go on in one way then that lines up perfectly with the middle of that copper link there you go you got your scribe there, which goes through the tooth, which is perfectly in line. You got your little scribed arrow, lines up with the tooth there, which needs to line up with the copper link, as if by magic. We are on. I'm not, R32. Well, I'm not sure. Look, we've got a bit of slack there. Oh, there you go. That's it. Of course, yeah. Once you put the tension on, that is the chain tight. So at TDC, got a cam alignment tool in there. We're going to rotate the engine twice, and the theory is it should all end up exactly where we left it. Let's go. is an R32 timed up. Now we're going to torque up these three bolts and you torque them to 60 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. So it seems a lot. You're going to need someone on the other side 
counter talking on the crank pulley to be able to do this really. So I've talked these three bolts up to 60 newton meters. We now need to talk them up another 90 degrees, a bit like in the head. So I've got a mark there on the bolt and another mark on the housing behind. I've done that on this one as well. However, with this one, if you put the socket on top, you now can't see that marking. So I've got the marking on the sprocket there and, and I've marked the socket with an S and an F. So I line the two points up and the S and that line. And when the F gets to that line, then we're at 90 degrees. We also have the cam locking tool in place, which slots in the slots in the camshaft. All that is doing is just helping make sure that it doesn't really move. You might just get a bit of a bite on there. Hence why they are replaced bolts, because they are stretch bolts. Next to replace is the crankshaft seal. To remove the crankshaft seal, there's no real easy or delicate way. You just have to use a screwdriver and tap it out with a hammer just being extra careful of not to catch the aluminium as the screwdriver is of course tougher than the alley. To fit the new seal, mount it through the front and tap it in gently with a hammer until it's flush. What we had done by removing the plastic insert from the crankshaft seal meant that it now wouldn't seat correctly on the shaft. It therefore splayed out and would leak. Unfortunately that put paid to any more engine rebuilding because I need a new seal and there's a long lead time. Join us next time for part two where we will continue the rebuild and we'll refit the engine.